I'm going to give you four things that every teenage girl needs to hear. When each of my daughters turned 13, my wife and I made it a point to have a celebration for them kind of coming in to adulthood. So we invited several of their friends, six, eight, ten of their friends, and we took them out for an evening to a restaurant, all dressed up, really cool, and then we stayed the night at a hotel uh, all together. We got all the girls in one room, and then we were adjacent room with an, an adjoining door. We were in the next room, but we wanted to celebrate them becoming young women. And then part of that whole festivity, part of that whole celebration was me giving them a promise ring and giving them a little speech in front of their friends to let them know who they are, what their identity is, and the four things that they need to know. The first thing that I wanted them to know is to love yourself. God made you with a purpose. You are not an accident. You are love, treasured, and precious. Love yourself. Know that you are a gift. Know that God has your back. God wants the best for you. God is seeking you so that you will seek Him. He wants you to seek Him. He wants that relationship with you. Love yourself enough to know that you are valued, especially from God, but also from your mom and I. So as I'm talking to them, I'm letting them know how valued they are to me and my wife, their mom, so that they know that they're not an accident, that they are truly, truly loved and they're a gift. And the importance of their body and what they mean to take care of themselves. So number one is every teenage girl should know, love yourself. That is so key. It's hard to love other people if you don't love yourself. The Bible even says, love your neighbor like you love yourself. Well, if you don't love yourself, Kind of hard to love your neighbor, right? And that's the second most important thing that God told us to do. Number one, right, is to seek Him first with all of your body, mind, and soul and to love Him that way. But that number two was love your neighbor like you love yourself. If you, can, if you don't love yourself, you can't love your neighbor. So number one most important thing, love yourself. Number two, respect yourself. Know that your body is a gift. Your body is an extension of Christ. It's actually a temple for the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit lives within you. Your body is that temple. So protect it and treat it that way. Take care of your body. Know what your limits are and respect yourself. Respect your body. Know what your limits are of what you will and you won't do. Part of that taking care of your body, not just with exercise and your mental, uh, what you put into your brain, your thought life to meditate on things that are true, noble, and pure, all of that, but also your virginity. Your virginity is a gift. It's sacred. It's treasured. And that is something not to be compromised. So God's word says that it's best that we save that for marriage in the union of marriage that God created. He's the one. That's his idea. Marriage is not a cultural idea. That's God's idea. He's the one that planned that so that we would have that life partner and be able to share that with. So it's his will that we be able to resist the temptations and hold out and share that with our significant other when we're married. But who's kidding who, right? Today's culture is tough. Peer pressure is real. That is a hard, hard thing to maintain to be able to do that. You can actually be an outcast if you're still a virgin. You can be laughed at and rejected and kind of pushed aside because you're a virgin. But trust me, you have to know this. When you're going through middle school, high school, it's tough and you might be that. When you're going through college, maybe your first year or two, you can be kind of that outcast or the weirdo. But as time goes on, people start cycling back and they're like, wow, that's really cool. I wish that I had maintained my virginity and it really comes full circle. So you're going to go through a season where that's really, really hard to maintain and tough. 
But then when you get past that, it's envied and it's cherished and it's actually, they're jealous of what you've got if you can hold on to that. But you can start virginity at any time. If, if you're at a point where you've already compromised that, then today decide, I'm going to be a virgin until I get married. Just don't keep compromising your body because it is a temple for the Holy Spirit. It's something to be respected. So respect yourself and hang on to that control of your body. Let me tell you this. I'm going to give you this warning. If you're young and you're watching this and you've been able to maintain your virginity, when you get a boyfriend, he wants one thing usually, and that is sex. And they're going to push and they're going to pressure and they go, well, don't you love me? Well, if you want to show me that you care for me or I'm going to leave if you don't do this, this, pressure comes in a hard way. If you sacrifice that and you give in, you will be spiritually tied to that person and they will have control over you. Because now you've given that up. You've given part of your spirit to another person. And they control you so they can start treating you poorly. And you're going to tolerate it because you feel like, well, I've already given my most sacred gift that I've got, my virginity, to you. So I guess I just need to hang in there because we're going to be married one day. Right. Yeah, no, when you're in middle school and high school, the chances of you finding your spouse at that age are slim to none. It does happen and super crazy rare, but way, 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 way more often than not, you will not marry the person that you're dating in middle school or high school or even college. So be careful what you give up. Be careful what you give. And once you do it once, if you break up and you go through that heartbreak and you're going to realize what control that person has over you, you go to the next person, it becomes even easier. Well, I've already given up my virginity, so it's Eh, let's, you know, let's date two or three times and then it, it's okay. We'll do that because I'm okay with that. Then three, then four, then five. Then it becomes multiples. You are giving your spirit away and diluting yourself and minimizing yourself. So that number two, respect yourself, respect your body, respect who you are. Don't just love yourself. Respect yourself. Hang on to that and realize what your limitations are, what your boundaries are, what your lines are that you will not cross and be settled in those and be cool with those and have friends around you who will support that and only date guys who are going to respect that. Number three, grow yourself. Always be a student. Always be learning. Put mentors in your life. Surround yourself with friends who are stronger, better, faster, smarter than you, and you can learn from them. You're going to rise up to that occasion. So always surround yourself with people that you can learn from. Put mentors in your life who you can grow from, their experiences, what they know, what they've read, what they can share, what they've heard. Have those people in your life. So always be a student. Always be growing. Don't ever be stagnant. Don't ever think you know everything because you don't. Just be a student and learn and grow and watch. And you're going to learn a lot of stuff through experiences. And you're going to learn a lot of stuff the shortcut way, which is just having a mentor. Experience, there's a lot to be said with that because sometimes you know what's right, but you just want to test it anyway and you fail and then you realize, oh crap, I shouldn't have done that. That was a terrible decision and you learn from that mistake, which that, that has its place for sure because you learn lessons a lot more solidly if you experience them, them yourself rather than just listening to it. But there's so much value to be had in surrounding yourself with books with self-help books, with uh, spiritual mentors, leadership mentors, career mentors. There's so many different things that you can learn from people. So that number three, grow yourself. Always be growing yourself and you will never be bored because you're always a student of just life. Be a life student of just things that are around you and people that are around you and things that you love. Be a student of that. And finally, number four, the fourth thing that every teenage girl should know is to serve others, give back, always be giving back. So you love yourself, respect yourself, grow yourself, but pour into other people, serve the weak, serve the people who can't, be a friend to others, always be giving back, be a better listener than you are a talker, be a better giver than you are a taker. 
be that person, serve others, and that's going to round you out into a great person with a lot of character and a lot of friends. If you like friends, you want to surround yourself with friends, serve other people. Now know that balance. There's a sickness in that. You could be that person that's always the doormat or being taken advantage of. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about just being a good friend who can offer sound advice because if you love yourself, respect yourself, and you're growing yourself, you've got a lot of things inside of you, inside of your character that you can share with other people. So give back, whether you've got younger siblings or people younger than you, you can start mentoring other people. But people in your age group, you can serve them just by being a good friend and being somebody of sound advice and solid character who they want to be around. Because if you have that positive, enthusiastic confidence, people want to be around you. And if you've got those first three covered, you love yourself, respect yourself, and you're growing yourself, you're going to have that confidence that you need to be able to serve others. So those are my big four that every teenage girl should hear, should know, and embrace it. And now that you've heard it, if I had a promise ring figuratively, I would put it on your finger right now and say, look at that. Make a promise to yourself that you're going to hang on to these four things and you're going to walk your walk, keeping these four things in the forefront and really taking uh, every bit of that seriously and knowing who you are. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you subscribe to this channel. If you like stuff like this, I've got several other videos. Tune in, watch some of the other ones. Hopefully some of the things that I share can help you in some way. Tell your friends about it and we'll hope to see you soon.